I always say, if you don't deal with fear, it will deal with you. There's not enough deadbolts you can buy in the world to stop fear. Fear is not part of the kingdom of God. It is not part of your future. It is a lie. You don't have to be afraid because God is with you. Light always wins over darkness, and you are not of the kingdom of darkness. You're of the kingdom of light. Matthew chapter 8 is our scripture for today. Matthew chapter 8, 23 through 26. Jesus got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was what? He was what? He was sleeping. The disciples went to him and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up, rebuked the winds, the waves, and it was completely calm. Now, the issue to Jesus was not the storm, was it? The issue was their lack of faith. He was sleeping. The root of your fear is not your bills, your sickness, your problem. Whatever it is you're facing, that is not your problem. The darkness is not your problem. It's the fear of the darkness. It's the fear of the sickness. It's the fear of money problems. It's the fear that's holding you hostage. It's the fear you've trained yourself to believe, not the problem. Because Jesus has given you the keys to the kingdom. You have light. You have answers. But it's the fear you have taught yourself to believe about the problem that becomes the problem. If I can just get out of this storm, I'll be okay. If I can just pay that off, I'll be all right. If I can just deal with this issue, if I can just get well, if I can just get past this problem, this stress, this pressure, then I'll be all right. But you're not recognizing the problem. Those are symptoms of the problem. We have to go to the root. It's a deception. We try to avoid fearful situations. Jordan and I know a lady that is amazing. She was about 80 or so, and she lived alone. Her front door had about six deadbolts on it. Amazingly, when you went into her house, the next room, the door to the next room had multiple deadbolts on it. You follow that hallway down to her bedroom, her bedroom door had multiple deadbolts on it. Let me tell you, friend, there's not enough deadbolts you can buy in the world to stop fear. She lived a life of a prisoner in her own house. She lived a life of being a prisoner in her own life. And this is what fear is going to do. It's going to try to make an agreement with you. People say, okay, I can put up with this. I can put up with this. I'll I'll try to do this. The disciples told Jesus, don't you care? We're going to, not maybe, we're going to drown. They're professional fishermen. We're going to drown. (laughs) We're going to drown. But Jesus was what? Sleeping. Sleeping. He rebuked the winds and the waves. But there's something you need to know about what happened on that trip because Jesus had said to them in Matthew 8, 18, just a couple verses ahead of this storm story, when Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. And if Jesus said we're going to the other side of the lake, there is not one demon in hell and no storm more powerful that can stop him from getting there. And if Jesus says by his stripes you are healed, there is no demon in hell that can stop you from receiving that healing or what you have need of. Except you. Except your fear. You've got to stop thinking and saying what fear says and start saying what God says about your situation. I've read this scripture several times over the last few weeks, and I want to read it again. You should probably rehearse it over and over, Luke 10, 17. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power, all the power of the enemy, and nothing. What does nothing mean to you? What's your definition of the word nothing? Nothing. One version says nothing by any means shall harm you. Friend, if you have that kind of authority and that protection, what do you have to fear? The Bible says, what do we have to fear? 
Fear is absent in the kingdom. It is not part of kingdom life. It is not part of your life. It is not true. The Bible says you can't trample on snakes and scorpions, right? That means you're going forward. Fear tries to hinder you from moving anywhere. Right? Fear says you stop or probably back up, but you trample on snakes and scorpions, which indicates you move right on and Satan has no authority, you're, but you're moving. You're moving forward, right? So when I had this paralysis, I went to the doctor and they began to do test, and it was a bunch of mess. They gave me all kind of futuristic prophecies. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> They said, you got to cut this out of your diet. Your body's all whacked out. You got to restrict. You got to change how you live. Confine limitations. What we do is we agree with it. Well, I guess I could live without that. I mean, I guess it's better than diet. I guess I'll take that one. I guess I'll, okay, I'll, I'll confine myself. I'll restrict. I'll, okay, I'll agree to that. I got to the place I was afraid to leave my house. I was a prisoner in my own body. Listen, I'll put it real plain. Fear is hell on earth. The Bible says with fear there's torment. And friend, you have been delivered from fear. But we began to make concessions. And Drenda wisely said one day, going through all this stuff, you got to do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. She says, do you want to live this way? I said, no. Well, she just took the medicine. She goes, fine. She threw it in the toilet and flushed down it. <laughs> Everyone say, thank God for a godly wife. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, so I had to learn. Listen, you can't win. You will never win making concessions with fear. And fear will try to tell you to make concessions and back up. You're not, you can't and won't. And it's trying to box you in a corner and you can't, you can't do that. You've got to stop that because it's all a lie. Second Timothy chapter 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Now through this series, we're going to talk to you how to get free from fear, how to overcome fear, how to deal with fear. We're going to cover that. But right now, I'm trying to lay a groundwork that, you know what, fear has pushed you in a corner. You're bigger than you think you are. Did you know that? Your potential is greater than you think you are. You can be doing great things because God is in you. And fear tries to tell you that you're incapable, that you're not lovely, you're, you know, you're, you're an idiot. You're a, you know, he's going to start naming all these adjectives about your life which don't match up what Jesus says about you. And you've got to change the picture. We'll talk about that. Join us for more from the Faith Over Fear series next time on Fixing the Money Thing.